Thaddeus from Sprout City Studios in Eugene, Oregon again. I just wanted to come to you with a short video on vibe in your songs. Specifically in the hip hop and R&B genres, vibe is such a huge kind of moving target element to how people are making mixes nowadays that it's hard to put into one box. Here's how to make vibe. but. One of the things that I see consistently as a problem when people are at home mixing or they've been in a studio for a couple of days and they're really trying to pull the best vibe out of their tracks and they're not getting what they want, number one is over compression. It's easy to do because with plugins nowadays you can just stack like six different kinds of compressors and limiters and really try to get some pumping movement and that can d just destroy a certain kind of dynamic level throughout a song, especially if you have attack and release times that aren't lining up with the beat of the music and all sorts of things. But that is the number one problem that I see with people destroying the vibe of their tracks is just making things over compressed. And there's a lot of different solutions to that, but the main one is to just check your mix with and without the setting in a compressor. So if you can, on whatever compressor you have, even if you have multiple, set the input and the output gain the same no matter how much compression you're doing. So if you bypass the plugin, make sure that the level doesn't change drastically in volume. Because if you bypass the plugin and the level drops a lot, you're actually adding a lot of gain using that plugin in a way that m might fool your ears into thinking it sounds better just because it's louder. What I recommend, number one, with compressors is match your input and your output gain so that you can truly listen to the vibe of the compressor and what it's doing to your track. Number two is mix problems. And this is a huge subject. There's no way to put it in a quick video, but really it has to do with how your monitoring setup is what kind of speakers you have, what kind of room shape you have, what kind of treatment you have for dealing with room reflections, low end nodes that are canceled out by the shape of your room. Um, low end is one of the biggest parts of hip hop and R&B music and if you don't get that right, chances are you, the mix is gonna fall apart on you. So one of the things I recommend for people if you don't have a really trustworthy mix environment is to get some headphones that you can really rely on their accuracy and the low frequencies. Some of the best out there are Biodynamic DT770s, um, Audio-Technica uh, M50X, those are great. Um, there's, there's a bunch of different forums online with people constantly arguing about headphone type, but it really doesn't matter which kind you use as long as the mix that you make in those headphones can go out to your friend's car and sound relatively the same to you. If all of a sudden you've got like way more 60 hertz than you're expecting, there's a problem in your monitoring setup. And I've experienced that a lot in my career. Knowing what the room sounds like is a huge, huge boon to making a better mix. Thanks for watching. I really hope this was helpful in some way. And if this is the kind of thing that you're into, we have an upcoming mix workshop on specifically beat-oriented music, hip hop, R&B, EDM. Check out the link below for details. Also, this fall we've got an upcoming Fundamentals of Sound and Intermediate Level Sound class here at the studio as well. Hit us up on our website, and if there's any other questions or comments you have, leave them for us. We'll get back to you. Have a good one.